few artists that bear the same kind of symbolic power as Kate Bush. Since the late 70s, she's been captivating people with her boundary-pushing brand of art pop and has been recognised by countless publications as one of the most successful and inspiring female musicians ever. In this video I'll be going over some of the facets of her music that I feel were integral to her success, and I'll mainly be referring to her track The Wedding List as the centrepiece of analysis because it compounds all the main arguments and, well, it's my favourite track of hers. Firstly, some groundwork. At around the age of 16, Bush had already compiled her first real demo tape, but was sadly unable to gain any interest from record companies. Luckily for her, a certain Dave Gilmore of Pink Floyd fame heard the tape and decided to help Bush record a new demo by paying for the studio. The new and professionally recorded demo went on to secure her a record contract with EMI. Fast forwarding three years to 1978, Bush released her first major single, Wuthering Heights, to promote her debut album, The Kick Inside. The song was an instant and huge success, and caused Bush to become the first woman to reach number one in the UK charts with a self-written song. This track was the catalyst that launched Bush's career, and Graham Thompson describes the effect it had in his biography on Bush. The absolute shock of hearing and seeing Wuthering Heights, feeling the perceptible thud of its instant impact on popular culture, was immediately followed by these simple queries. Who is she and where does she come from? Wuthering Heights acts as an ideal starting point to the analysis of Bush's style as it introduces the topic of intertextuality. The title of the track, of course, is taken from the novel by Emily Bronte, and the lyrics of the song lift elements of the story as well as actual quotations from the book. Borrowing from and reinterpreting works from other art forms is something that Bush became known for throughout her career. She talks about it in one of her biographies by saying, Whenever I base something on a book, I don't take a direct copy, I don't steal it, I'll put it through my personal experiences and in some cases it becomes a very strange mixture of complete fiction and very very personal fears within me. The process of reinterpreting a narrative scenario or theme into something personal is representative of the kind of artist Bush was, and a notable example of this is The Wedding List, a song that tells the story of a bride that seeks revenge for the murder of her husband-to-be at her wedding. The song is believed to have been heavily inspired by the 1968 film La Marie et en Noir, or The Bride Wears Black, which essentially has the same story. This is a great example of Bush taking a tragic premise and placing it into a pop song with contrastingly upbeat music. This was common practice for Bush and it's a thread we'll return to later. But another interesting aspect of her frequent use of referentiality is her willingness to enter into an artistic dialogue. In other words, The Wedding List was inspired by Francois Truffaut's film, which was based on Cornell Woolrich's novel, and at the other end of the scale we have Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill. Now this is a very streamlined list of works that all revolve around the same basic premise of a bride wanting revenge, essentially. Each one adapted slightly to fit the artist's style and intent. This is just one example of Bush's hunger to engage in this kind of dialogue by repacking packaging stories and themes in an attempt to create something innovative on the musical and artistic spectrum. Of course, Bush's love of film and literature was merely an extension of her incredibly narrative lyricism and natural ability for storytelling. Graham Thompson explains that, in terms of her overall aesthetic, her creative instincts, her work ethic, her attitude to fame, as well as the way she insists on living her life, Bush has always been far closer to a poet, novelist, playwright than a pop musician. And this is due to her masterful command of rhyming lyrics, her linguistic choices, and the compelling and vivid stories she chooses to tell. Let's go back to the wedding list and focus on the lyrics of the first two verses and the pre-chorus. One of the first things we can notice here is a rather loose rhyming scheme. The first verse is nearly composed with rhyming couplets, but then breaks the AABB pattern towards the end. Nonetheless, Bush does return to words that either rhyme or half rhyme in the next few lyrics. In the second verse especially, we can see her use of assonance, which is defined as the resemblance of sound between syllables of nearby words, arising from the rhyming of two or more stressed vowels. In this case, it would be the double O sound. Bush also repeats the lyric, and I'm coming for you, at the end of both verses, to communicate the character's relentless desire to get revenge. What's interesting to consider is that the syllabic pattern for these three sections is all over the place. It's inconsistent and uneven. It seems that Bush is prioritizing phrasing and word choice over rhythmic flow. Of course, these are just three sections from the song, and also just one part of the larger story that's being told about the bride. The structure of the story and the way in which it's communicated to the listener is another glowing element of Bush's ability as a storyteller, and its inherently tragic essence personifies another one of Kate Bush's traits, her frequent handling of sensitive or heavy subject material. 
Now, it wasn't hugely surprising that popular artists were making music revolving around taboo subjects in 1980s Britain. Perhaps what was surprising though, was that it was being done by a solo female artist in an art pop style. Bush explains her choice of using controversial subject material in a zigzag interview with Chris Needs. I like the idea of making the music and subject matter at odds. Like in Army Dreamers, the obvious thing is to write a slow, heavy song, but if you do that then it always becomes too obvious, less easy for people to accept. When it is something so heavy, if you disguise it in a light tune or something happy, it will be accepted, and then when it's actually realised, it will probably hit home a lot harder. The song she's referring to, Army Dreamers, revolves around a mother struggling to cope with the death of her son that was killed on military duty, and the track's tragic overtones were certainly registered when it was banned from being played on the radio during Britain's involvement in the Gulf War. Now, the mere fact that Bush tackled subjects as solemn as nuclear war, suicide, or incestuous pregnancy doesn't necessarily elevate her as a musician. It did, however, stand out as a strong feminist statement at the time. Bush could have gone her whole career putting out mild, middle-of-the-road pop about failed romances and so on, but instead she showed she could roll with the big hitters. Of course, the way in which Bush packaged the ideas and placed them into the context of a story was also fantastic. Returning to the wedding list one more time, we can learn how the story of the bride ends. She finds her husband's killer, murders him, and after realising that by getting her revenge she has nothing left to live for, she commits suicide. An incredibly downbeat ending that gets even worse when Bush reveals that the protagonist was actually pregnant. This song is one of many within Bush's discography that has such an intense story that one might think it's just plain over the top. And certain tracks are indeed seen as being darkly comedic, but it's difficult to tell with Bush as the lyrics can seem so sincere and emotive. Having given a concise overview of Kate Bush's approach to songwriting and lyricism, the last thing to mention would be her influence as one of the most successful female pop artists of all time. She was able to garner both critical and commercial acclaim in a period and industry dominated by male acts. The Guardian got it spot on when they said, too often in pop music we're sold a male version of female creativity, but Kate Bush is the real thing. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please like, share, and subscribe. You can find links to my Facebook, Twitter, and coffee pages in the description if you want to support the channel. Thanks again.